He plays a bad guy in Narcos and a good guy in uh, Gentified on Netflix. I stumbled over that and I shouldn't have because I speak Espanol. But my friend uh, Manuel Uriza is with us and he stars in both playing two roles. Manuel, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for having me. So happy. How about that? It's a, it's it's like all these all these roles are just dropping in your lap and you're having to go from good guy to bad guy. Tell me about that as an actor. Oh my goodness, yes. I mean, first of all, I'm grateful, right? Any kind of work is great work. Uh, but yes, they're so contrasting, so different one from the other that uh, it's uh, it, it was definitely a challenge, you know, to take, a, to take one hat off and put the other one on. And, and and jump from one set to the next. Uh, it, it was it was definitely a, a very very interesting exercise to say the least. Yeah. So let's talk about first first about uh, Hentified because Hentified is is uh, is the, is a newer one and it's something that's really exciting. America Ferrera is one of the one of the producers. And you play somebody who comes back to Boyle Heights. Tell me about your character's uh, role here. Uh, yeah, it's uh, he's the uh, the oldest son of, uh, of of pops played by Joaquin Cosio. That in, 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 in the season one, you really only see him or hear him as a voice on the other side of the line. Uh, and now he comes back to help uh, Pops because Pops calls him because he needs help. And that's when when all these interests start to clash, right? Where 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 his his, his past, the, the emotional baggage with his father, a father that to, to Ernesto's understanding, he just loves the way he knows how to love. And, and maybe that, uh, as we've all, I know in my life, I've had that experience. It's maybe not the best, but it's it's the best we can get. And it's the best that the other parent can give. And also another thing that's very interesting of this character is he comes back to Boyle Heights and he's seen as the outsider. He's seen as the guy that kind of bailed on them. Uh, but it, 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 it cuts deeper than that. It cuts much, much deeper than that because he is, I think, the character that, that lives in the middle of, of, of both, number one, generations between him and his father and then between him and his son and his, his nephews. And at the same time, in that duality of, of culture, because he is like myself, 100% Mexican through and through Mexican, but at the same time, through and through American that has to, has had to sort of morph himself into even being more American to, to fit in and to get ahead. And I feel that's why the uh, the rest of the family sees him as an outsider because they feel they bailed when in reality he was just trying to really make his own way. I mean, he went to Idaho. What I mean, it's, it's like yeah. it's, it's not it's not like going to the other side of town. He left he left the state, and uh, yeah. because uh, you know I relate to that very much so because you know I'm 100% Mexican and 100% American, and and I totally empathize with that character and understand what that means to the father and in, in, in turn, what that would mean to my sons uh, in real Excellent. life. But it really does speak to the Latino uh, effect of how we, we deal with family issues, right? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, I think there's a, it's a double-edged sword because like you said, it's, it's, it's a little bit of the family dynamic that exists in, in, in Latin families. I know it's been the dynamic in my family. I, uh, I'm 100% I'm, I'm Mexican, but my grandfather on my mother's side was Cuban, so those drive it even deeper. You know that that uh, that, that communication. It seems they're about to break into a fight, but no, that's that's the way they love each other. And uh, so I think it's a double-edged sword because of that, because it is a dynamic that exists in the in the Latin families, mm -hmm. but also it's a dynamic that exists in 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 in, in a bicultural uh, community, which is where this family finds themselves in. And it's exactly where Ernesto finds himself, right dead in the middle of it, where he has a, a peripheral vision of the needs and wants of one generation and the other, and the needs of wants of one culture and the other. So I think that makes him such a such a complex character in that sense. You know, Manuel, it's so interesting because your characters are complex, and, and this one has feeling and heart and, and, and gratefulness and love and all the things that you that you would expect of that kind of character and written into that role. And then you have your Narcos role, where you just are a cold-blooded businessman, politician, taking advantage of the, the drug trade. It's, it's, I mean, think about putting yourself in that, well, think about it, you're doing that. You're putting yourself in that, in, in uh, his name is Carlos Hank Gonzalez, who's yes. uh, uh, one of the big uh, uh, Narcos of the day. And I actually interviewed him back in the day when he was working oh, with Carlos wow. Salinas de Gortari. And I, and I remember that very that name very, very well. And you're playing that guy. Yes, yes. And that was that was so interesting because I'll tell you a story. I actually met 
I mean, his political career, I don't remember. I was young. And then towards, towards kind of the, the, the twilight of his career, I was still, I was in my early 20s, so my head was elsewhere. I wasn't really paying attention. But uh, interestingly enough, I met him when I was about 10 years old uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Del Mar, California. It was something to do with horse racing. At the racetrack, and, yeah, at the Del Mar racetrack. At the racetrack in Del Mar, yeah. Uh, because my grandfather was a racehorse trainer. So, ah, okay. so the, the, something about him sending a horse to train, something like that. But he was sitting at the table and it was very interesting because while I was doing my research on him, it was very difficult for me to find any videos or, or anything that could really give me enough to grasp some certain characteristic, some, some physical characteristic or trait from him. So I had to rely a lot on what I read and I had to rely on that very faint memory that I had of him when I was a kid. And interestingly enough, everything kind of came together with the people that I spoke with that knew him that uh, and the common denominator is that he was a really nice guy. He was a very, a very uh, charismatic man, a very good friend, very loyal to his employees. I spoke to many of his ex-employees and they, they, they have nothing but good things to say about him. So, and then I married that with that, that vision I've had of him uh, when I was a kid. And he was that, he was like, he could have been my favorite uncle, you know, like, do you want another, another Sunday? Are you sure? Yeah. It, it was very interesting dynamic. So getting to this character and obviously what was written in the page, uh, I had to do it, I as an actor, I speak for myself, I don't speak for other actors, but I have to justify each and every action that a character takes in every scene. I gotta take my ego out of it, I gotta take my opinions out of it, good or bad, I have to justify every action because, um, you know, language changes, the way you dress changes, situations change, but the only thing that doesn't really change is the, uh, the, the human context. Yeah. So in order to bring truth to that, without having any physical trait to hang on to, all I had to rely on was his truth, his justification for saying, doing, and acting in, in every way that it was presented to me on the page. Well, episode one, you come flying in in your private jet and, and uh, do the, de the land deal that uh, was forced on them, and you're very cool, calm, and collected, and you look every part. Uh, the Carlos Hanka <laughs> role that I that I remember of the, of the gentleman that I interviewed, which by the way he loved being interviewed by American Television, <laughs> which is really interesting that we you know we cross paths here. You, you the actor, me the the former reporter who used to cover that sort of thing. It it must do your heart good that there are so many great Latino stories being told now on the screen, not only Netflix but the big screen as well. Yeah, I mean it is, and I think we've come a long way. Uh, one thing that, that I've always tried to advocate and I try and champion is that, that we have to, we always are hoping to get out of that little box where, they, where we've been put in for a long time. Yeah. When characters are presented into stories, it's usually the same. Either you are the, the criminal with a gun or you're the victim or you're, there's always something that's very stereotypical. And what I like, what I'm really grateful for is that we're starting to get all these characters that, that, that bring in all their flaws, their, their, their rights, their wrongs, and they, they're just incorporated into stories with the same problems, the same issues, the same virtues, the same defects, we just happen to be Latin. Yeah. And, 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 and we contribute, we contribute to the story just as much as we contribute to society. And, and I think we've come a long way and I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud to be uh, riding that wave. I'm glad to hear that and congratulations on all your success. Manuel Luisa, you can be seen on Netflix right now on uh, Narcos Mexico and also on Hentified. Great talking with you and I wish you much success. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you and uh, I should have met you when I was researching Carmel yeah. Sack. would have made my life so much easier. Arriba y adelante, verdad? Vámonos. Si se puede. Si se puede. Gracias. Gracias.